Welcome to part one of our tutorial on op amp basics. Okay, and in this tutorial, what we're going to do is that we're just going to introduce you to the basics of the op amp. Okay, that any beginner in any electronics course would require to understand the device. Okay, so as you can see here uh, this uh, device, or rather the op amp that we're talking about, is basically an analog device. Okay. It's basically an analog device, and uh, it's you know the op amp is basically the shorter form of expression for the actual term, which stands as operational amplifier. Okay. Yeah, it's true that the uh, device that we uh, are discussing right now is actually an amplifier. Okay, that's given us you know a great leap in amplifier technology. Okay, I'll just pan it down for the moment. Yeah, that's right. So the op amp, you know, uh, if you're just wondering, uh, basically, as to why this uh, device is known as an operational amplifier, you've heard about voltage and current amplifier. It's not an operational amplifier. I know that sounds quite weird, okay? But if you just consider its, uh, you know, creation back in the 1960s, okay, it was just created uh, back then in order to, you know, specifically perform or rather, you know, execute certain mathematical and computational yeah computational uh, operations basically so it is created back in the 1960s to you know perform certain mathematical and computational operations uh, uh, to be specific enough so from this uh, you know uh, you know area of its operation uh, for which it was designed back then the engineers uh, over here uh, coined this term uh, you know operational amplifier in order to you know express its exact purpose Okay, so today uh, the op amp, you know, is an indispensable and a very popular uh, device in analog electronics industry. Okay, and now it's being used in various media players, music systems, and you know what not. Okay, there's basically no end to its application nowadays. So having just said that, given your basic idea, okay, we just quickly, you know, move on to uh, the you know circuit symbol of the op amp. So here you go. So I'm just going to show you over here the circuit symbol. Okay, let me just change the color for a moment. Yeah, that's right. So there you can see uh, the diagram that I'm drawing here. Okay, uh, it's basically a rocket-shaped diagram. Okay, so this rocket-shaped diagram that I'm you know giving over here is actually the uh, symbol for the op amp device. And over here, as you can see, the op amp basically has a single-ended output. Okay, or rather, you know, I just uh, might write it in uh, you know full form as such. So it has a single-ended output over here. Along with that, it has got two terminals for its supply voltages, okay? So there we go. One is called a plus VCC, okay? And the other is known as minus VEE. So from this notation, you can see that uh, the two terminals, you know, take both positive and negative polarity supplies. So from this, it's just clear that the op amp, you know, basically works off a dual polarity power supply, okay? So it just requires a dual polarity power supply for functioning okay now the, other than that it's got two inputs okay so these are basically its input terminals okay so there we go so one of the input terminals has a positive sign on it okay and is known as the non-inverting input terminal okay so there we go it's known as the non-inverting input and the other input terminal has a negative sign on itself. So it's known as the inverting input. Okay, so there you go. So if you're just wondering as to why this is called a non-inverting and inverting input, then I just cite an example over here. Let's say, uh, you know, we apply a input voltage signal over here at the non-inverting input terminal with a positive polarity. Okay, so this input voltage over here has a positive polarity. And now since uh, this device is an amplifier actually, so it'll just produce an output voltage which would be, you know, the amplified version of this input voltage right over here. Now the output voltage would, you know, have the same sort of polarity as that of the input signal whenever we're applying this input to the non-inverting input terminal of the op amp. Okay, so since there is no inversion of the inputs, okay, in the output and the uh, input over here, so that's why it's called a non-inverting input terminal. If the, you know, polarity over here for the input, uh, you know, voltage signal was negative, we, we would have, you know, uh, 
you know obtained a negative polarity output voltage so since there's no inversion of input it's just called a non-inverting input of the op amp okay and now on the other hand if you just you know go forward and apply okay a you know the same input voltage at the inverting input that's the one with the negative sign on itself okay so if we just go forward and apply the uh, same input voltage with the positive polarity on the inverting input of the op amp then although the magnitude of the output voltage would be same in this case also I mean uh, compared to the previous one but still the polarity at the output voltage you know would just be inverted or rather reversed okay so we can see here that there's a reversal of polarity at the output voltage in comparison with that of the input voltage okay so that's why since there is an inversion of the uh, polarity between the output and the input voltages so this terminal is known as an inverting input terminal and the output voltage you know would be reversed in polarity whenever we would apply an input voltage to the inverting input terminal of the op amp okay so if you just you know go forward and apply a negative polarity input voltage to this uh, you know inverting input of the op amp then we would have obtained a positive polarity output voltage okay so now having just you know uh, you know told you or rather you know uh, just to remove the confusion that's in your mind as to why they're you know the input uh, terminals are called so okay so I just like to you know uh, point out two very important properties over here okay I'll just uh, do that later on uh, right now let's just get down to the equivalent circuit representation of the op amp okay so it's just uh, you know worth mentioning that uh, back in the 1960s okay there was no other you know amplification device other than the transistors okay so now when the op amp you know was first created okay it was uh, you know uh, created by embedding certain transistor stages in a silicon chip so uh, that actual circuit okay is very complicated okay and it's not you know possible or rather you know not easy you know for any beginner to understand as to you know why there are certain stages and their functions okay so for that reason what the engineers did was that they just came up with this you know equivalent circuit you know which is actually the representation of uh, the uh, you know actual circuit in a but in just a much more simplified manner okay so if you just you know uh, refer to this circuit uh, apart from I mean just as far as your understanding is concerned and then I just I like to tell you that this circuit is actually the thevenized form of the actual circuit of the op amp as it was embedded in the uh, op amp chip okay so uh, here if you just take a look in between the two input terminals okay here's the non-inverting and inverting input terminals so th there is a resistance in between them okay I'll just like to call it RI so now RI over here actually represents the input resistance of the op amp okay so now I'd like to mention that the input resistance of the op amp is basically very high okay it lies approximately in the mega ohms range okay and if you just you know uh, take a look at the output uh, stage of the op amp so there we have another uh, resistance okay which I would like to call as RO okay so now here RO represents the output resistance of the op amp okay so as you can see here the output resistance of the op amp is designed to be very low okay approximately lying in the ohms range now this is done basically in order to you know facilitate that the op amp should you know output a large uh, you know output current okay so in order to just you know uh, enhance the uh, property of the op amp to output a large value of you know uh, output current the output resistance is designed to be as low as possible so other than these we have here a diamond shaped you know a dependent voltage source okay uh, whose magnitude can be expressed something like as A times VID where A actually represents the open loop uh, voltage gain of the op amp which is indeed you know very very high okay it lies I mean it's just you know approximately you know 10 to the power 5 times that of its input voltages okay so now having said that if you just you know uh, go back to the previous circuit I just said that the op amp you know has an unusual form of representation with this you know rocket kind of shape so if you just take a look at this input face of the op amp over here it's got a wide face okay with a straight erect line okay as you can see here now this wide input face basically you know represents the fact that the op amp has a very high input resistance so this is basically represented symbolically in this way 
okay and if you take a look at the output end of the op amp okay in the symbol basically so the output end is you know very narrow tapering and you know sharp and pointy so now this sharp and pointy output end you know actually you know uh, signifies the fact that the output resistance of the op amp is very low so this is basically uh, the reason why the device symbol you know resembles that of a rocket shaped uh, you know symbol over here uh, so now you know why this is uh, you know drawn this way so uh, basically coming back to our discussion where we left it uh, we can say uh, that let's say uh, I'm just giving you an example over here let's say we just go forward and apply two input voltages at the uh, two in inputs of the op-amp that's the non-inverting and inverting inputs basically so what the op-amp basically does is that it just you know amplifies the difference between the two input voltages that is V1 and V2 okay to produce the output voltage that it generates okay so here you know the term VID actually represents the difference between the two input voltages that's V1 and V2 applied specifically to or rather respectively to the non-inverting and inverting inputs okay so there you can see that the uh, magnitude of this uh, you know a dependent voltage source over here depends upon the value of the input difference voltage so now this input difference voltage over here you know is just you know multiplied by the um, gain uh, or rather the open loop gain of this op amp to produce this output voltage now the output resistance you know very, being very very small there's a little drop occurring across this output resistance as such and approximately the total amount of you know output voltage generated by you know uh, rather you know produced by this you know dependent voltage source depending upon the value of the input difference signal is basically you know uh, sent or rather you know appears at the output terminal as the output voltage so we could just mathematically put it down as vo is equals to gain times the input difference signal okay so if I just you know uh, term this equation as uh, equation 1 and this is equation 2 then combining both of them we could obtain okay an equation that would just look like this a times v1 minus v2 so now you can see here as I told you that the open loop gain of the op amp you know is very very high and you know is a, a, approximately you know 10 to the power 5 times this input difference voltage okay so that's why the op amp you know can you know, significantly amplify even very very minute differences in the input voltages okay so now this property of the op amp basically gives rise to a characteristic that would just look somewhat like this so on the y-axis if we just go forward and plot the output voltage and the input difference voltage being plotted on the x-axis of this characteristic the characteristic basically you know appears somewhat like this I'll just use red here to show it okay so there we go so in this characteristic as you can see that uh, there are you know uh, the op amp uh, basically you know we just compare the input difference voltage with that of the output voltage so if you can just you know uh, consider the previous two equations that we just you know discussed a little earlier that I mean I was ref referring to basically this equation over here so you can see here from this equation that no matter how minute this input difference voltage be due to the immense gain of the op amp the output voltage becomes significant okay so now this input difference voltage you know, can be slightly positive can be slightly negative okay I'll just pen it down can be slightly uh, you know positive or negative okay depending upon the certain circumstances of its input you know uh, I mean the on the values of its input uh, voltages respectively to its uh, to inverting I mean to its inverting and non-inverting inputs respectively so no matter how small or minute this input difference voltage be if it's you know slightly positive okay even if it's slightly positive then due to the immense gain of the op amp the output voltage you know quickly you know shoots up to the positive saturation voltage level that's denoted by plus v set now this positive saturation voltage level that's plus v set you know approximately corresponds to the positive supply voltage you know given to the op amp okay and now if this input difference voltage again on the other hand you know is slightly negative okay no matter how minute it could be but still due to the immense gain of the op amp okay the output voltage in those cases you know just quickly shoots to the negative saturation voltage levels that's denoted by minus V set so the negative saturation voltage level actually you know corresponds to the negative you know input supply given to the op amp 
Okay, so this is basically this characteristics you know is known as the ideal uh, voltage transfer characteristics. Okay, so there you go, voltage transfer characteristics. So just having said that, I just given you the very basic for starting the idea, or rather, you're uh, developing the idea on the op amp device. Okay. So now, having said that, we just come to the end of our discussion in this tutorial. Don't forget to watch our next tutorial on op amp basics. Till then, it's thank you for now and goodbye.